Hello, everybody. You're listening to a Coffees with Coffees podcast. My name is Flub, and I'll be your host. This is the Flub Day. Um, I got a pretty good show for you tonight. I actually got a really good show for you tonight. It's going to be a little, little faster than normal. I want to get, get it done, get it out there, so you guys can get to your Battle Cup matches that you just got from your... Uh, <laughs> from these, obviously, these... these pat- the patch that just came out, getting these new and exciting items that are available in the Battle Passes. So, let's without further ado, let's go into the Pro News. Um, in Pro News this week, there's been a couple different things. Star Series and the ending of Dot... Uh, the Dota Pit was was a little bit cut off from last time since I did it on Saturday. I do these uh, updates on Saturdays. The end of the tournament actually had some really interesting results, including the Star Series this week. And really the main thing about all of those games and the thing, the thing to take away is that there is a big, there's a big thing about displacement heroes and using their displacement spells and abilities. Those heroes that I'm talking about are stuff, are some people like Rubik, Pudge, those movable. Okay, you're you're in one place. I'm gonna move you to another place. Displacement. So, one way that's really crazy that was actually in the finals of the Dota Pit was actually using Rubik to pull the ancient creeps in the radiant side, using a lift to pull them up and put them into a <laughs> into lane, being able to pull the creeps and basically denying. Sumael, the experience and farm for like the first, it was like a bunch of waves, it was four waves worth of, of creeps in the beginning. And it's kind of led on to this new thing where not only can you do that, you can do it with do it with Rubik on that situation because he has, he can control the Ancients. Now Pudge can't do it with Ancients, but Pudge can do it to any of the other creep camps using his hook to stack and uh, to, to stack the pools and uh, I'm sorry, pull the stacks. And if you are able to pull all these different stacks from basically anywhere in the map, there's only one or two that I could not get. And it's all about movement speed as well. Having the correct movement speed, having just a the ability to have a wind lace and a pair of boots lets you almost stack every creep camp in the game, which is super easy to get, especially as a support punch. You have someone else playing the five. This opens up a big lane of avenues and gives options for some for a hero that generally wasn't very good at stacking and pulling to begin with because he obviously didn't have the way to stack multiple creep camps. So pulling into these heroes that have not the ability to pull multiple creep camps but using their abilities to pull creep camps that you couldn't normally do before, kind of like how Io was in the past, it opens up a whole new avenue and creates something really really interesting in Dota. Now, I want to tell everyone, you probably want to get your Pudge games in soon, because I don't think that this is going to exist for a while, or they're going to either, they're going to nerf Pudge in some way, or they're going to kind of change the map around a little bit. The, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of Pudge, I love Pudge, and I think that, (laughs) in general, I think that Pudge is going to, is like, long live Pudge and keep him in the meta as long as possible. But it's going to be very hard to have a hero that can do pretty much everything better than another support can do. It's doable that Io was able to do it in, in the past, but they took that away from him for the, when they were changing out the metas and things like that because it was too strong because he was the only one to do it. Well, it's just going to be the same way. So I don't see it lasting for that long. If it does last for this patch, it's going to get heavily nerfed afterwards. So take advantage of Pudge while you can, because I don't think he's going to be staying for... His meta style right now is going to be staying for very long. On other news, on other pro news, Liquid has been doing incredible uh, ever since they have gotten GH on their team. I think that he really rounds out the team. And I think that not only... I mean, obviously they have Miracle and... Tumba Man and all these great people, Kuroki, just uh, and what is it? Mind control, mind control. Obviously, wow, let me forget that guy. They have a they had a star studded team beforehand, and for some reason with Bulba it just wasn't working. And that's kind of like a it's kind of seemed like it's gone along. Not that Bulba's a bad player, or that he doesn't have the experience. He generally gives a lot to the team and comes on comes in with a, a new unique look at least that's what a lot of pro say players say and a lot of people analysts and just general not 
knowledgeable Dota people have to say about the guy. Uh, looking at what he offers, though, and what actually happens in a game, it doesn't really translate that well. And it, it's good to see that Liquid have found something out of it. I wish Boba, Boba, Boba all the luck. Um, Boba all the luck. You couldn't say his name right. But I feel like this is a better fit, and I want to see this team do well, and I think it will do well. I think it's going to be the team to beat. Obviously, they have a star-studded cast, and it's not going to be the craziest thing that they're going to be doing well, but at the same time, they're doing extremely well, so watch watch these guys in the future. All right, so second thing that, we'll, that I want to talk about is the Darkened Patch. Everyone's already been playing it. It's been super hyped. If you haven't gotten a chance to play it this week, the Dark Moon Patch is a wave-based survival game that is built into Dota. It generally has, has like 15 of the heroes, and there's certain combinations that people have been talking about throughout the week. What's what's good? Well, I say week, only been like two days. But generally, there's certain little strategies, little niches that you can do to help improve your game. One is you want to play one generally like every day because it gives you like a big bump of experience and it gives, well experience I say, but it's basically these points that you can turn in to get items. So. It's got that daily quest challenge that we've all noticed in many games like POTS, all the MOBAs, basically a staple that's in gaming right now, that daily bonus type feel to it. The thing is though, there's many different waves in the game and there's a lot of different strategies for how it works through the game. The biggest one is that you not only want wave clear, but you do want some single target damage. Having the single target damage is very important. The the biggest thing is having Disruptor and DS and Underlord. Now that's all AoE, but the, the real thing about it is having those three offer something to your team that none of the other heroes can fill. Darkseer himself, you would think that it's because of his Ion Shell and adding a, an AoE that he doesn't have to be next to, which that is very, very strong, don't get me wrong. But having the ability to clump all the creeps with his vacuum making AoE even stronger, and then also giving the ability to use his wall. His wall is incredible, and it stops up like entire matches where I've seen him be by himself and save like two people that are that are down while having wall, because wall just completely stops the, the motion in, in its tracks and allows you to, to generally work on other things that you couldn't normally get to with other heroes. So he's incredibly important, he's a must-have. Disruptor is the other must-have, and he's he's a must-have because how this game works with the whole wave system, there's a lot of spells being cast in this wave setup. A lot of them are based on the heroes that are set up. So you have to cancel those spells. And one of the one that's in particular that's really, really bad is Kunkka and Tidehunter at wave eight. The ultimates that they have in con in conjunction with each other, leave you locked down, and if you want, you could have your entire team get BKBs by that point, which is not cost effective. And sometimes it's important to get BKBs on one or two on one of the two two people, especially by the end of the game. But at that point, it really isn't worth it because you can just have this one hero that just shuts down areas and. They've also changed some of the abilities for these heroes. All the heroes have like a little tweaking here and there, and Disruptors is that his ultimate goes down to 30 seconds. A 30 second Disruptor ultimate shuts down their heavy spells and shuts down the these ultimates on these bigger creeps that can cause a lot of problems. So Disruptor is a must, DS is a must, and the last must is an Underlord. Underlord gives the whole AoE perspective, the AoE damage that is needed but he also gets a lot of single target damage by using his AoE. So, I mean, he's a win-win scenario, really, and he gives that tankage that a lot of the others don't, heroes don't offer. So, in my opinion, he's kind of a must-have because of, obviously, his atrophy aura, or atrophy aura, sorry. I, for some reason, like to say atrophy. Um, and his, his reign of fire. They are very good spells. I actually think I haven't seen it used super well yet, but obviously his ultimate is also a very key component for other games, uh, for actual Dota games, and if used correctly to transport out 
in a dire situation to get a team back to base, that's been savior for a couple of my games. So he, it, with a, under the right hands, Underlord can be the determining factor between getting to the next level or not. The other heroes that I would consider, I would not even consider the other eight, but PA, Ember, Sniper, and Medusa are the other two heroes you should have some combination of. Obviously, Medusa has the has the AOE single target damage. Uh, it can be somewhat of a tank and gives the whole uh, the ultimate that can lay down a lot of CC. This game is about controlling the amount of waves that you get and slowly moving in at the right moments. Sniper obviously has that AOE slow, gives you that advantage that other heroes can use that massive slow area. He also works well with Maelstrom, just like Medusa having that ability to work with it. All, a lot of these heroes do work well with Maelstrom, and obviously that's what you're going to want to have on these giant, massive waves. And the idea of this game is really on the items, so... Uh, moving into other heroes, PA is also really important because obviously the miss percentage when the heroes get really, really big and tanky and do, dish out a lot of damage, it's really nice to have that miss percentage. Also, they kind of reworked her dagger so it hits multiple times on a percentage, which is pretty neat and offers her some AoE, so she's not like completely crap because of that. But the single target crit on the last boss, which is an invoker that's impossible to kill, there's been a few, obviously there's been people who have, beating, have been beating it, but it is just in insane. He has massive regen, he casts like all the spells, jumps around, it's, it's nuts. So PA really helps out in that situation. Ember, why I suggest Ember, is that he's kind of bad in most of these situations because he, he can't really tank at all. And his sleight of fist does add a lot of damage over an area and it really helps out the team being able to bounce around and kind of makes him invulnerable during that second. But not ver but when he's not versus the big waves and he uses his uh, uh, when he uses his sleight of fist, he actually doesn't he's out of sleight of fist and the creeps do way too much damage for him to generally tank. It's a lot different. The creep damage is a lot different than what it was in actual Dota because the Dota creeps get slowly better. These get rapidly better really fast. So it's not that good to tank unless you're like naturally tanking or building forward, which he doesn't build forward. So he is someone to consider. He just you just have to play him a little bit differently and use sleight of fists offensively, hitting the situation of trying to hit as many people as possible because that actually keeps you alive better than being safe and using your using your alt to get back and forth. Uh, there's also one thing that I want to say is that Ember is one of the better heroes against chickens. Chickens are one of the one of the ways that you can have it. There's mini Roshans and chickens. It's two of the waves, and generally it's you hit these little things that run around, and you get a money bags from them. The they don't actually do do damage, and it's better to have a lot of spread like little tiny bits of instances of damage because that's how it tracks the gold flying out of them. So, in general, having Disruptors use that uh, static field to keep them there, and then having someone with the with Darkseer or Ember just sit on top of them, having both of them gives you tons of gold. But if you can't have both of them, I can totally understand it. That's why I say Darkseer is a must, and Ember is kind of not needed sometimes, because Darkseer can kind of do that, that already, and having a PA and a Sniper or PA and Medusa might be a little bit better. Uh, I'm still fooling around with it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Send me a message. You know, whatever you whatever you want. Send me a t send me a tweet or a message at the end of the show. I'll tell you how to how to get to me. All right. So we talked about Dark Moon, what what it offers, what it does. Um, let's talk talk about the question for me. I'm gonna do this segment every week. Uh, the question that, that I have for this week is from Tim Kaninsky. Uh, I, I know him as Top Gun on Betamax. Uh, <laughs> it's a great name. I love the name. I don't, I don't want to say that this is quite his question. I'm paraphrasing it. He, he kind of had a long email about it, trying to ask me about all these different things. So I'm going to kind of shorten it down to this one little section. He, he asks, I can't, I can't extrapolate 
what I learn from higher Twitch, Twitch streamers because they don't do because my my <laughs> not they my teammates don't do what they're supposed to do. Then I tilt and I can't overcome this. How is how do you gain MMR by by using the the, the strategy of like watching higher players play and then trying to use that as a as an advantage and i would talk back to him I, I, what i would have to say to beta is that when you're looking at these games people really like look at these high mmr players and they're, they're like okay you have to do it this way because this is how the general game functions and this is what they're doing but what they're the thing that a lot of people seem to be missing is that when you're looking at the the way that they play they aren't looking at what they are doing as much as what they are doing plus what the their team is doing a lot of times whenever i'm looking at stuff uh I'm, i mean i'm not incredibly high i'm i'm at 5k but if you if you're looking at the, the game you're you're trying to figure out what you can do to help your team and help yourself at the same time and a lot of times people think that like you have to have this stream of understanding that you have to go down a certain path that's not how it is. A lot of times I disagree with my team probably 70% of the time. Generally what I'm doing is, do we have a, an urn on the team as a support? All right, I'm gonna pick up an urn. I need these boots or I need these upgraded boots, but is it more important that I pick off the enemy team and pick up a sentry ward at this point? It's, a, it's about understanding the, the game as a whole. And he, he, I feel like a lot of times when people watch the these streams they're looking at one aspect or two aspects of what is possibly going on in these guys heads yeah they explain a little bit but there's a lot of stuff that they do instinctual that other players take for that they take for granted that you guys probably don't or that you wouldn't consider i don't think that i think that i do this too in certain aspects and i don't think that mmr is a is a good test of what that is because a lot of times MMR isn't based on what you're doing right it's what you're doing right on like mechanically but it's what you're doing as a low risk factor a lot of times the low risk people the ones who sit and farm all the time and play these heroes that generally don't you know lose that advantage unless they play really well coordinated games those are the ones that are going to get higher MMR quicker, and that's why people generally carry and did and have these situations where they don't depend on their team, because you can do that at that without like without needing any help, and that's you're you're doing the safest route and controlling the game as much as you can for yourself. A lot of streamers say it, a lot of people say it in general. It's something that kind of goes by the wayside, but you have to control your game. If you control your game, you control their game. It's it's all about making yourself survivable in, in pubs and making yourself succeed in a way that it's it's not about the understanding of what needs to happen at a given moment. It's about trying to pick options for yourself and trying to not get people frustrated or not get frustrated yourself and then move from that point. It's hard to it's it's hard to say like yeah just don't tilt because everyone wants to do that everyone wants to not tilt i would just say that you have to like take a step back from yourself whenever you're getting in a tight spot and be like okay i can do this if i can go down this situation and if i need to create the situation for myself then i will try to get the people who are listening to me to move in such a way to move the game forward in that path if this person isn't listening so if there's one person who's wanting to farm try to get smokes and get pickoffs or even if your team's not not the best at it and try to get vision out in places where you couldn't get vision before that's probably the best way that you can do it without getting too long-winded i know i've already been a little long-winded already um if you have any further questions you can always send me a text uh send me a not text a uh Twitch message, um, send me over Twitch or Twitter or email, you know, I'll tell you at the end of the show. Um, last but not least, I wanted to give you guys an announcement. 
Uh, I'm going to be moving this show on to, to Sunday, 9 Eastern. Now, obviously, I'm not going to have the show tomorrow because, <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, there's not going to be much information from now till Sunday. So I'm going to do it next week just because the battle passes are out. You guys are going to want to watch them. Also, I can get more content in the beginning of the week. You guys can watch it on, on Monday. You miss it. Generally, that's what people do anyway. So these Sunday nights are going to get more information in throughout the week. And kind of, they kind of wrap up the, the last week better. So that's what I'm going to be moving to. And if, if there's too much of an uproar, I'll switch it back. But I don't see any problems coming out from that. So that kind of closes out our show. Um, I'm gonna go through all the all the people that I want to th all the all the things that you can reach me at all the things you can reach Toffee at Toffee's at. Uh, first off, I gotta give a shout out to www.bensound.com slash royal royalty free music. Uh, this they're a great site. I use their music obviously for this for generally some ambiance, you know, so you guys don't get don't get bored. Um, not that I'm boring, you know, obviously. I, I like what I have to say, but, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can also subscribe to us at Toffee's Dota, uh, at Toffee's Dota 2 uh, for our Twitch. That would be always be helpful. Or you can subscribe at our YouTube channel, YouTube channel 5, Five Minus Gaming. Um, you can also follow Toffee's at Toffee's TV. Or you can follow me at Flub Dota. Uh, you can always email me at crazy uh, you can, at my email crazyflub at gmail.com. Um, so you can always tweet me, send me emails. Uh, I'm I'm always here to listen to either questions or just talk about stuff. You know, just send me a tweet. It's not gonna it's not gonna offend me if you guys disagree or if you guys are here because that's what Dota is about. We're here to talk, figure things out together. So I I the, I've been flub. And this has been the Flub Date, and I hope that you've been updated. You guys have a good night, and go win some battle points. I'll catch you later.